Long ago, in ancient China, turtles taught us about change, how it comes from energy, and is represented as a combination of one and zero in patterns that relay information based on the sequence. How their shells formed a map of the universe, lines that shaped into characters carrying ideas, ideas that became the first writing, called Oracle Bone Script, a script that formed the program known as the I Ching, or the Book of Changes. It is a binary algorithm that documents every possible instance of energy change in the cosmos. Now, in the Americas, it is the painted turtle which teaches us about energy and change once more. You can find them lounging in the sun by any source of fresh water, a pond, a lake, a river. The painted turtle can stay underwater for months, unaffected by the anoxic conditions that normally lead to brain and cell death within minutes. They don't do anything particularly unique, nothing that isn't happening in every organism already. The secret of the painted turtle, the wisdom they offer, just as with the I Ching, is written in their home. And for turtles, home is where the shell is. Their color comes from the pigment melanin. Melanin absorbs the fullness of luminous energy, the entirety of the electromagnetic spectrum. Melanin takes this energy from light and photosynthesizes it. It uses radiation to power the splitting of the water molecule, just as in chlorophyll, though melanin is magnitudes more efficient. Chlorophyll absorbs only the blue and red spectrum of light and dissociates the water molecule, an irreversible process, along with CO2 and sunlight to help build glucose, a necessary component in carbon chains. Melanin uses sunlight to change water from a liquid to a gas, then back to liquid and repeats this process. Melanin splits and reforms water. Every two water molecules yields four hydrogen molecules, four highly charged electrons, and two oxygen molecules. Hydrogen holds the energy and diffuses it throughout the cell. Chlorophyll might be thought of as a specialized alternative to melanin, though even plants still contain melanin. Melanin makes energy in its most fundamental form, usable by any type of reaction in any cellular process. The energy of hydrogen. Hydrogen fuels cellular processes such as cellular respiration or ATP. It so happens that animal life must find ways to convert this energy from melanin, water, and sunlight into chemical energy. ATP is not fueled by glucose, which is really just a building block for biomass. Glucose is not a source of energy, as it cannot even produce the energy needed for its own metabolism. Melanin initiates cellular respiration. The two leftover oxygen molecules have to be discarded swiftly, so they are combined with leftover carbon from ATP. The two leftover oxygen molecules have to be discarded swiftly, so they are combined with leftover carbon from processes like ATP. The CO2 must then be released. The majority of weight loss is breathed out. Just as with trees, the biomass comes from gas they build into matter. And likewise, trees remove their oxygen after photosynthesis. And another similarity, their oxygen comes from water, not from the air around. The average human processes around 50 kilograms of ATP a day. The lungs do not account for the oxygen in the body. We do not absorb atmospheric oxygen. Breathing does not carry oxygen to our cells. Consider that the lungs are coated in water, and blood is mainly made of water, and an increase in temperature directly reduces the dissolvability of oxygen into water. We'd have to breathe so rigorously we would destroy our lungs by day one of life. The lungs repel oxygen. Meanwhile, carbon dioxide has an easier time dissolving through that lung barrier so that we can exhale carbon dioxide while not receiving more oxygen. It is noteworthy that the average person does not consciously breathe. Added to the supposed need for such large quantities of oxygen in the current models, makes it impossible to fulfill those requirements. Indeed, oxygen is toxic. Even slightly higher concentrations of oxygen than we are used to can be deadly, causing toxicity and turning the blood to acidic. Oxygen is named from the Greek oxy, acid, and gen, forming, so that oxygen means acid forming. It is highly reactive and unstable. 
oxidative stress, oxidation of metal, carbon dioxide, all examples of oxygen's toxic properties. However, it is stable with hydrogen, the most powerful antioxidant. Dark fruits such as blueberries and dates contain many antioxidants because their skin contains higher concentrations of melanin. Notice how in plants, melanin is necessary to build the actual fruit. The lungs, therefore, serve as the primary waste removal of the entire body. The lungs at rest are equal to the environmental atmospheric pressure, and so there is no airflow. Inhaling lowers the pressure, allows them to fill with air, and draws CO2 from around the body. Exhaling increases the pressure, sending that breath out of the body, clearing the oxygen, clearing the CO2. The main role of oxygen is to make hydrogen accessible in the form of water. As the majority of the body is water, the source of initial energy starts with water and sunlight reacting through melanin. Suffocation or hypoxia is not from a lack of oxygen, but a CO2 poisoning and oxidative stress, destroying vital cells. The body needs to remove the oxygen through breathing, not retain it. This is why you can't hold a deep breath in for very long. There's too much CO2 built up. Yet, holding an exhale can be sustained for many minutes, especially with practice. It is all about training CO2 endurance and slowing metabolic rate which reduces oxidation of the blood. Take running as another example. You are breathing the entire time you are running, yet it is the water you drink after that supplies you with the energy and fuel to recover. Stretching, flexing, exercise, massage, and movement of different parts of the body, such as the chest, the stomach, the diaphragm, the arms and legs, or anywhere, during inhalation draws CO2 from those specific areas of the body, followed by an exhale is how the body can reduce oxidative stress, how one breathes into different regions of the body, not to supply with oxygen, but to remove it. By this understanding, being able to reduce lactic acid buildup means a state of anoxia can be sustained for long periods of time. So now we know the ideas of aerobic and anaerobic should be defined based on the method of reducing CO2 or removing oxygen. And so we return to the painted turtle, whose shell is covered in melanin, making them a solar-powered battery. And when they hibernate for months underwater or swim, the melanin gives them energy and high levels of bicarbonate in the turtle allow for the lactic acid to be neutralized. The shell can also store excess lactic acid so that the carapace acts as a pH buffer, which is entirely necessary when the oxygen can't be released via the lungs. Melanin's photosynthesizing ability rewrites biochemistry. It is the main source of energy. The highest concentrations of melanin are in and around parts of the body that receive the most light, such as the eyes and skin and hair, or for turtles, their shell. But in fact, melanin surrounds the nucleus of every cell in the paranuclear space, making the diffusion of energy from melanin's photosynthesis readily available. For cells deep in the body, such as the neuromelanin in the brain, the natural radiation from biophotons, or the internal emissions of light, provide the energy for melanin to use for the splitting and forming of water. Melanin seeks sources of light and the rest of the morphology of an organism is structured around this. That forming and deforming is a binary form of communication, liquid and gas. The I Ching isn't just a coincidence of the turtle shell. The turtle shell is an elaborate energy battery, a modified spinal cord that takes the energy of the sun and stores it. This is the inherent property and function of melanin that turtles merely utilize with their solar power bank. The fundamental source of energy cells require to operate is hydrogen, and it starts with melanin, water, and sunlight. Those ingredients give us life. It is maybe poetic that what is basically paint is the quintessence of life. No wonder nature comes in all forms of artistic expression. The body knows how to function. 
we need only to clean up the waste and spend more time with the turtles basking in the sun.